Hello, everybody. John Frank here, coming at you. Um, by the way, uh, we may have a cameo appearance from my cat. Uh, I'm actually here in China, in Chengdu, China, right now, so it's 10 p.m. Um, so I'll, I'll also introduce my cat, Roy, here in the background. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we've got a lot to cover. We're going to talk about Kellogg here at uh, Beat the GMATs, right like an expert series. Um, Kellogg is an interesting place. And there's, there's uh, a lot of things that you're going to want to do differently for Kellogg than you would for other schools. And that's why we're here. So uh, we got about an hour. We're gonna, I'm going to talk for about 45 minutes or so, uh, hopefully close. And there's going to be some time for some questions and answers as well. Uh, for those of you who are, are joining us on one of these webinars for the first time, you'll notice that your microphone is muted. And the reason is there may be as many as 500 people joining, which is great, of course. Um, but, but, you know, we can't have 500 people talking. So check out the chat box in the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, feel free uh, to, to, oh, geez. What just happened? Pardon me, guys. Sorry about this. All right. Um, so feel free to just go ahead and enter your questions into the, into the chat box uh, via text, and we're in good shape. All right. With that, let's get into it. Before we begin, in a word of caution, right now I know that we're here to talk about Kellogg, but there is a big picture, okay, the big picture which I want everyone to know, all right, and, and this is a little bit crazy, this is something that a lot of people uh, may feel a little bit uncomfortable uh, hearing, but we believe that fit is actually a myth, okay, I'm going to say it again, fit is a myth, okay, what do I mean, all right, I mean that at the end of the day, your application is what it is. Okay, you're going to put your best foot forward. You have done whatever you've done over the past two, three, four, five, six years, right? Uh, now, are you going to tweak that application a little bit for Kellogg? Of course you will. Is Kellogg different? Yes, of course it is. That's why we're here. That's why I can talk for an hour, right? In fact, I could talk about 10 hours about Kellogg. It's a very unique place. But I want you all to know the key to getting into a good school is not oh, it's so important that this school has a different personality and that school has a different personality and, oh, I want to do marketing so I have to go to Kellogg. No. Uh, the way to get into a good business school is to put your best foot forward. The way to get into a good business school is to think about your greatest hits. Okay? So here we are. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Kellogg and that's just fine. All right, but you're going to see there's, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. All right, let's get into it. Kellogg. A lot of people think, gosh, Kellogg is just a marketing place. I want to go into marketing, so I should go to Kellogg, right? Well, not necessarily. Let me give you some examples. All right, You may have heard of Booz Allen. right? This is a consulting company. Well, Mr. Booz and Mr. Allen both went to Kellogg. All right, You may have heard of the company formerly known as Anderson. Right now it's Accenture. Well, Mr. Anderson also went to Kellogg. What does this mean? This means that Kellogg is perfectly good in the world of consulting. Kellogg has literally given birth to some of the leading consultants in the world. All right, what else? Uh, CEOs, general management. Okay, you may have heard of companies like Allstate, Office Depot, Target. Okay, you may have heard of Andrew Fastow of Enron fame. All right, he went to Kellogg also. All right, so there's a strong general management tradition at Kellogg. Okay, you may have heard of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Right, it's an outdated name, but it's a great organization. Right, going to bat for African Americans. Um, the guy that runs that organization, at, at least as of last year, uh, was a Kellogg MBA. All right, what's the lesson? The lesson here is that if you think that Kellogg is a one-trick pony, Right, if you're only interested in Kellogg, for example, uh, because you want to be a marketing guy and you believe that you should go to a marketing school, you know, uh, you're doing it wrong. Okay? There's a lot more to it than marketing. All right, next, more basic facts. You know, you guys, uh, everybody knows Kellogg has a website, right? Uh, what I'm not going to do in this presentation is just regurgitate facts at you guys you know, stuff that will appear on the website. You're all smart. Go to the website. You're going to get basic facts, right? So we're going to talk about some basic facts here, but um, I think what, what I'm going to try to cover instead is going to be just a little bit different, a little more thoughtful. 
Um, but real quick, some basic facts. Uh, GMAT range, 680 to 760, 15% acceptance rate. Now, what, why are those numbers significant? Well, because they're pretty much like any other Magic 7 school. You know, maybe Stanford's a little harder to get into, but that 15% number is pretty good. GMAT range, you know, the, the, the easiest way to look at this, the world of the GMAT is, you know, get a 700 and you're in, and, and, and you're in the game. Right? If you're Chinese or Indian, it needs to be higher, 730 maybe. Okay, but there's no secret sauce here. Top recruiters, BCG, McKinsey, Booz Allen, Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft. Microsoft, gosh. Oh, and here's Roy the cat. What's up, brother? Um, Microsoft, here's a technology company. Well, yeah, here's a technology company. All right, Kellogg uh, believes that it is a very strong tradition, not just in technology, and we're going to talk about the MMM program, but also in entrepreneurship. All right, starting salaries, 107 grand and better. What's the point? By the way, the junkyard dog did not really go to Kellogg. I was, I was you know, just, just trying to keep things interesting. Um, what's the point? Kellogg is Magic 7 all day long, twice on Sunday. Here's a great school, great scores. You get into Kellogg, you're in great shape, right? There are some schools in the Magic 7 which are easier to get into. There are some that are harder to get into. Some where the GMAT scores are higher, some where they're lower. Here's a Magic 7 school all day long and twice on Sunday. All right. I see more people straggling in. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. I'm John Frank. I'll introduce myself a little bit more later. Why Kellogg? <coughs> well, lots of reasons. Um, you may notice that picture. That picture is actually my family. The reason I put that in there is because it's, there's a very collaborative spirit at Kellogg. This is one of the things that everyone talks about. Okay, I'm skipping down on the slide there. You'll see the collaborative spirit. We're going to talk about all of these. All right. In order, there's the one-year program option. Right? Two years for an MBA does not suit everybody. Just doesn't. Okay? Why not? Well, maybe you're older. Maybe you only need an MBA uh, because your dad said you had to get one before you could become CEO of his business. Right? The one-year program is fabulous for some people, not for everybody. Okay, Global Lab, very cool. One of the cool things about Kellogg. All right, experiential training, experiential learning. Many schools are saying, you know, back when I went to Harvard Business School and I graduated, Jesus, eight years ago, um, there was not the focus that you see today on experiential training. Kellogg's no different. Okay, there's a focus on experiential training. MMM, we're going to talk about. It's another cool program. Quest, we're going to talk about. Another cool program collaborative spirit, and, of course, marketing. By the way, let me take this moment to introduce you to my dad and my sister, both of whom are Columbia graduates. <coughs> but we're not going to hold that against them. All right, let's talk about each of these things. All right, first is the one-year program. We talked about it already just a little bit. Here's the problem with a one-year program, and there are only a few schools that offer one. Okay, here's the problem with a one-year program. problem is, what happens if you... If, if you need to get a job. You see, the way that people get jobs, you guys, uh, through business school, oftentimes has to do with a summer internship. Right? If you're doing a one-year program, guess what you don't have? You got it. It's a, it's, it's a summer internship. Right? With no summer internship, getting a full-time job may be difficult, especially for career changers. Right? Let's say that your goal, let's say you're a real estate guy, like John Frank was in 2004. Right? And the reason I went to business school was because I wanted to get into a different business, maybe management consulting. How are you going to get to management consulting? Well, the way you're going to get there is through a summer internship. Right? Otherwise, all you are is a real estate guy. How's John Frank going to get a job at McKinsey? Well, I'll tell you how. He's going to get a summer internship there or a summer internship at BCG. Right? So why is the one-year program great? Well, because you can crank it out fast. Why is it bad? Well, because if you need a summer internship to get a job, and most of you will, okay, you're not going to get a summer internship. Okay? All right, Global Lab. Um, cool program, about 50 kids are picked per year, and, and you do some work in Chicago or up in Evanston, and we'll talk a little bit more about Chicago soon, and you do some work abroad. Okay? There are projects usually all over the world, Turkey, Belize, you name it. Right? We had something like this at Harvard, um, but it wasn't nearly as cool. And Kellogg's doing a great job. I mean, really, they're, they're checking all the boxes, right? This idea of the Global Lab is fabulous. International program, love it. Truly international program. Okay, the same 
history with experiential training, experiential learning. There's a lot of stuff in Kellogg which we didn't have, okay, at HBS. And and it's it's practical stuff. You know, there's the asset management, there's the, the medical practicum, there's courses in China. Um, they're really doing a good job to make it real world. You know, as opposed to, for example, just sitting in a classroom and doing cases with the same 90 people, okay, they're, they're doing a good job of really putting people into the real world, um, you know, putting your learning into practice, right? Practicum, experience, actual experience. All right, the MMM program. All right, it's a real cool program. It's very unusual. It's all innovation. You know, it's all about innovation. What it is is a dual degree, all right? And you're going to get a master's of man it, it's master's of management and manufacturing, okay? In addition to the MBA. The point is innovation. All right? Now, a lot of people say, you know, we've worked with a lot of people through the years. They say, "Well, John, you know, I love the idea of it, you know, but I'm not an engineer. You know, I I didn't do my undergrad in engineering." Okay, and the good news and sort of a little known fact about this program is you don't need an engineering background to apply there. It's great if you have it, right? If you don't have it, it's going to be a little bit harder to explain why you're so sure that this is the right program for you. But guess what? Just because you're not an engineer, you should not rule this program out. Take a look at it, all right? You don't need to be an engineer to apply. All right. It's one of the one of the very special things about Kellogg is this MMM program. To my knowledge, it's the only program of its kind. All right, Quest. This is something that almost all the schools are doing now, even though uh, Harvard didn't back when I when I went to Harvard Business School. Um, essentially, it's like Outward Bound. I don't know if you guys know Outward Bound, right? But the idea is that before you actually start classes, everyone gets together and they go out in a uh, you know some sort of trip. Right, some of the trips are all over the world, cool places, you name it. You know, Costa Rica, surfing. Um, now, not everybody can jet off to Costa Rica, and that's okay. There are uh, Kellogg has trips that are in the U.S., continental U.S., and also Hawaii and places like that. They make it really easy to go. There are trips for families. There are trips for kids. Right, it's a super cool program. I think like 85% of kids who who are enrolling go. All right. Very, very cool. Now, collaborative spirit. When I was at Harvard Business School, all right, I got to tell you, uh, in two years there, how many team projects did I do? You know, fewer than five. Truly, fewer than five. Okay? Um, now, at Kellogg, if you talk to somebody who went there, ask them how many projects they did, okay, that were not team oriented, they would say the same thing. Okay, fewer than five. Everything is done on teams, done with teams. Okay, this does not suit everybody. Frankly, it doesn't suit me, <laughs> you know, um, but it's very special, it's something that's very unique about Kellogg. You got to think about, does, does this suit you? Do you like this idea? Okay, it's not for everybody, but it's real. Okay, it's real. All right, and finally, marketing. Everybody knows, of course, Kellogg's very, very well known for marketing. All right, I see some more people are joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you. John Frank here from Initiato uh, with Beat the GMAT. All right, let's talk about marketing. I'm sorry, we, we're one slide away from marketing. The academics are stellar, of course. It's a top tier school. Okay, one of the neat things about Kellogg, again, different than Harvard Business School, different than a typical quote unquote general management education, okay, is. Uh, that you get to choose a major, and there are a lot of majors. You get to choose from 18 majors. Okay, that's very unique. At Harvard Business School, you know how many majors there are? None. <laughs> One, general management. All right, there's also a ton of electives, 300 electives. 18 majors plus 300 electives equals, you got it, no joke. All right, and the majors are interesting, right? Real estate is a major, human resources is a major. You can really sort of choose your own adventure there in a way that we couldn't at Harvard Business School, by the way. All right, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, career services, you know, we talked to clients who've gone there. Career services at Kellogg is actually pretty well regarded, which is great. And by the way, this is not academic related, but so is uh, the experience of the spouses. You know, it's interesting, actually. There, you, you, if, if you ask around, uh, one of the nicest things, and Duke is the same way, by the way, uh, very, very well known for 
supportive networks for significant others, spouses. The number at Kellogg is 40%. That's a pretty high number. It's one of the highest I've seen. All right, it's another great perk of the program, right? If you're going with significant others, there's just tons and tons of uh, support and programs and, um, you know, events and mixers and minglers and all these things. Uh, they make it easy for spouses uh, to audit courses, okay, which, by the way, was not the case at HBS. Um, so, you know, all, all good things. Now, let's talk about marketing. Right, everybody says, well, Kellogg, it's all about marketing, right? Let's talk about marketing. Uh, the answer, of course, uh, is no. Okay, listen, marketing at Kellogg is the real deal. No question. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. You got some of the biggest names in marketing, Kotler, Calder, right, and more. All these theories that we read about, you know, the four C's and the four P's and all of this stuff is born at Kellogg. Okay. Yes, all of the greatest marketing companies will come recruiting at Kellogg. Absolutely, absolutely, they will. Okay, but I, I see there's some number of hundreds of people on this webinar today. All right. Let's say that there, I don't know, we're, we may get up to 500 people today. Let's say that of the 500, how many of those 500 do you think are marketing guys? Uh, I'll tell you, folks, it's not the majority. It's not the majority. All right. And I'm here to tell you today that that's okay. Kellogg needs real estate majors. They need human resources majors. They offer 18 majors. Marketing is only one of them. All right? Kellogg has given birth to some fabulous entrepreneurs. Um, Match.com, for example, was founded by a Kellogg guy, from what I understand. These are famous companies, companies that have gone public. Um, by the way, let, let me give you a, an example from personal experience. Right? I went to Harvard, and I was a real estate guy. Um, now any real estate guys on this call may realize, in fact, the real estate program at Harvard, well, there isn't one. There's like one or two classes total in real estate. When I was there, there was one. Now there's two. Right now, I also got into Wharton. I got into Stanford. I got into Berkeley. You know, schools where uh, the real estate program is very well regarded. Okay? Uh, however, I went to Harvard. Turned out to be a fabulous decision for me. Why? Well, imagine how hard it would be to get a real estate job coming out of NYU where they have this fabulous real estate program, right? Or imagine how hard it would be to get a finance job, right, coming out of NYU where everybody there wants to go into finance. Okay, now, if you're following my logic, you know where I'm headed, right? Imagine you're a marketing guy and you go to Kellogg, you know, and then Johnson & Johnson comes, you know, Procter & Gamble comes to campus. Dude, it's going to be hard to get a job, you know? How many resumes are they going to get? They're going to get a lot, right? Now, what about, what about Stanford? What about University of Chicago? Guess what? Those schools, uh, I'm sorry, those companies recruit there too. You see what I'm saying? Right, real estate companies didn't only go to Wharton because Wharton has the quote-unquote best real estate program. No, the best real estate companies recruited at the best business schools. And guess what? At Harvard Business School, I was the best real estate guy there. Nobody there had a stronger, literally, literally, nobody there had a stronger real estate background than I did. Okay? If I'd gone to Wharton, it might have been harder to get a job. All right, you get what I'm saying, right? Kellogg needs real estate developers. They need entrepreneurs. They need all of these people. Right? I promise you, the finance professors at Kellogg... <laughs> are plenty smart. It's not just the marketing guys, right? The finance professors at Kellogg are making a fortune, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars, right? And it's not just in salary, it's in consulting gigs. Okay, these are world-leading guys, world-class guys. All right, the moral of this story, and this is something we're going to get to in a little bit, is go to the best school you can get into, okay? What does that mean? What is the best school? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to all that. Okay, but I, I just want to make clear that yes, the answer is yes. Kellogg is the best known school for marketing. Right? That's not enough. That's, that's, if that's your only understanding of the program, okay, it's not enough. Now, speaking of, uh, speaking of marketing, let's talk a little bit about Chicago. Okay, you know, one of the reasons I chose to do this speech is because you know I know Kellogg well, and not only has my company sent many, many people there, but um, I live in Chicago. Okay, Chicagoans like me, I know you're thinking, John, I thought you said you were in China, and that's true. Uh, but when I'm not in China, I'm in Chicago. 
Um, our offices are in Chicago. Uh, Chicagoans have a lot of pride in their city. We Chicagoans believe that Chicago is the best city uh, in the U.S. Okay, the the same maybe could not be said about you know Wharton, Philadelphia, right? Maybe could not be said by the guys who you know are up in uh, Ithaca, New York, at Cornell or whatever. We love Chicago, and this is important for your application, right? Why 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 Cornell, right? You need to come up with reasons why. Uh, University of Chicago, you have to come up with reasons. Why Kellogg? It's the same thing. One of the reasons should be, certainly could be, Chicago. Okay, Evanston is Chicago. Evanston is, you know, it's it borders Chicago. It's it's like the seven the seven thousand block is Chicago and the seven thousand one hundred block is Evanston. All right, do some research. Are parts of the city unsafe? Yes. Does it get cold? Absolutely, it does. But it's an amazing city. Okay, the cost of living in Chicago compared to New York will blow your mind. Right in Chicago, I own one, two, I own three multifamily properties. Okay, if I were to sell them all, it's a 11 units total. If I were to sell all of those units, I could buy like two in New York, because that's how expensive New York is. New York is so incredibly expensive. The same is true for Boston. The same is true for San Francisco. Chicago is affordable. Okay, and it's beautiful, it's on the lake, and the restaurant scene is amazing, right? What, what do you want? Do you want plays? Yes, Chicago has them. Uh, do you want museums? Yes, world class, one of the best art museums, you know, top three in the U.S. By the way, I think Chicago is the second biggest city in the U.S. What do you want? Entrepreneurship? Yes, there's a strong entrepreneurial scene. Finance? Yes. Hedge funds? There's the There's our own, like... I don't even know what it is, but they're traders down at the Board of Trade and all of these things, right? Chicago, this is part of your story, okay? There's a good chance that you're going to stay, right? And, and, and the reason is, um, you know, there's a lot of recruiting that happens here in the city of Chicago. Okay? Do some research. Talk to some friends. This can and should be part of your story. If for no other reason, then you heard it from me. We Chicagoans have pride in our city. Right? The same way that if you're applying to Columbia, one of the reasons is going to be New York. Okay, the same is true for Chicago. Okay? All right. Something we talked about early on, this idea of fit. And uh, you know, I, I usually if I'm in a room full of ten people, at least one will disagree with me, but I gotta tell you folks, I've been doing this for a long time. Listen, hear me out here. Okay, every school deserves a love letter. Kellogg is no different. You've got to tell Kellogg that you love it for all of the reasons we've talked about. Gosh, I love marketing. Right? Gosh, I love Chicago. I've always wanted to go to Chicago. My aunt lives in Chicago. It's beautiful. The lake is amazing. And I'm half Eskimo. Right? Chicago. Great. Every school de deserves a love letter. That's why I want to go to Kellogg. Okay, uh, man, I, I always work well on teams. I love Chicago. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Then when you apply to... Uh, what's a good example? Then when you apply to Tuck, right, they get a love letter too. Man, Tuck is the best school for me. It's just a perfect fit. I love the small size of it. I love uh, the fact that there's a focus on teaching. You know, I consider myself an academic. One day I want to be a professor. By the way, until then I want to work on Wall Street, but this is my last chance to live out in the woods. Man, Dartmouth is just the perfect school for me, right? Then you, then, then you shift over to Stanford and you say, gosh, I can't wait to get back to the West Coast. It's where I'm from. It's where my family is from. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a tech guy. Gosh, Stanford, you are the perfect school for me. Right? You get the idea, right? Every school deserves a love letter. Now, that being said, uh, here's what's going to happen. Right? Of the 500 of us that are on this call, Right, you're going to get into a few schools. Maybe you get into Harvard, maybe you get into Kellogg, and maybe you get into UC Berkeley. Right? We, we, we get this because it happens to our clients. The client says, hey, I got into Harvard, I got into Kellogg, and I got into UC Berkeley. You know, and um, I'm an entrepreneur. I think I should go to Berkeley, right? Because they're so good at entrepreneurship. Or let's say the same guy, he gets into Harvard, Kellogg, and Berkeley, and he says, well, listen, John, you know, I... Um, I read about Kellogg's culture. Uh, I should go to I should go to Kellogg, right? Everyone's really happy there. Teamwork, hugs, and kisses every day. I should go to Kellogg, right? Okay. My answer to that question is absolutely not. 
right? We tell kids, you go to the best school you can get into. I went to Harvard because I had a sense, right, that maybe one day, 10 years later, I would mention that name Harvard and it would impress people. Yes, Wharton has a better real estate program. Yes, Berkeley has a better real estate program. But you go to the best school you can get into. Okay, if your list of schools is Kellogg and then um, you know Darden and then George Washington, right? I don't care. I don't care. The answer is you go to Kellogg, right? In the business world, reputation, you guys, is so important. Take it from me. I'm older than all of you. Reputation and business are like chocolate and peanut butter. Okay, they go together. Go to the best school you can get into. All right. Now, of course, every school needs its love letter. Right? If there are any deans of admission listening in here, they're going to vomit because they're going to say, John, what are you talking about? Kellogg is so special. Right? And the guy from Johnson, Cornell, is going to get on and he's going to say, John, what do you mean Cornell is so special? I don't want people just going here because they didn't get in any place else good. Well, I'm sorry, brother, but you've got to go to the best school you can get into. Do not overthink fit. Fit is a myth. All right? I realize that this is a, a controversial perspective. Um, but take it from me, I've been doing this a long time, um, long, uh, long enough, okay? So feel, feel free to ask questions about that, beat me up on it. I'd love to, I'd love to spar a few rounds with you guys on this, on this very controversial statement, fit is a myth. For MBA programs, mark my words, fit is a myth. And my cat seems to agree. Isn't that right, Roy? All right, anyway. Let's get specific, shall we? Let's talk just a little bit about essays. Um, by the way, make sure to check out the Beat the GMAT site. There's a chat party going on, or, or at least there will be in the next, uh, in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but for the next 15 minutes or so, give or take, we're going to talk a little bit about essays. By the way, our website has in-depth uh, analysis of all of these essays. They're written personally by me and mostly my partner, Raj. And I've got to tell you, uh, you know, I read those for the first time when I was preparing for this. He's a genius. You need to go to the website. You don't have to buy anything. Go to our website okay, and read our essay analysis. There's nothing else like it. I promise. There's nothing else like it online. All right. Essay number one. Right? What's the greatest obstacle you've ever overcome? And how has overcoming that obstacle prepared you for success? Right? It's an, it's an essay about obstacles. What's the first thing I notice? The first thing I notice is, geez, 350 words. I've been doing this a long time, you know, and I've never seen a 350 word limit before, right? Well, you know what? Good for them. The, the reason they're doing that is because they're sick and tired of everybody cutting and pasting essays from school to school. So here's an awkward number, uh, and I hate to say it, folks, but you got you to gotta write it, you know what I mean? You can't take a 500 word essay and just strip out every third word, right? And you can't just add a lot of fluff to a, you know, 200 word uh, essay either. Um, now. What's the approach here? And this is, actually, it's the approach for any essay, any school. Okay. The truth is, it doesn't actually matter what the essay questions are. We will deal with all of these specifically because that's what everybody's invested an hour for. Um, but it actually doesn't matter what the essay questions are. All that they're trying to do is give you a forum to share your greatest hits. Okay? It's your greatest hits. That's all anyone cares about is your greatest hits. Right? How many Bob Marley songs do you know? The, the only ones that, that you know probably are the ones on his Greatest Hits album. Now, I know this, this dates me. This shows that you know, back when I was a kid, we actually did buy CDs. Um, greatest Hits. Right? I don't care what the essay questions are. If you finish writing your four Kellogg essays and you have not described your four greatest hits, you're doing it wrong. Okay? Focus on your greatest hits. Now, specifically here, these guys are doing you a favor. Right? They're asking you, how has overcoming this obstacle prepared you for success? Right? The reason they're asking you that is, frankly, because they're, they're doing you a favor. Right? If they didn't ask, it would have been your job to answer it anyway. Right? This is not a, 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 an essay, a chance for you to just describe the obstacle. Oh, and it was really big. Oh, and it was really hard. No, the point is, this is business school. You need to show how you have learned skills that will help you to be successful in business. Right? This is business school. This is not a writing contest. Right? It's business school. This is not the meaning of life school. Right? Don't write an essay about the time that your chipmunk died or even, God forbid, your father died. It, of course these things are tragic. 
okay? But we're not interested in the fact that somebody has died. We're not interested in the tragedy. We're interested is in how has overcoming the obstacle prepared you for success, right? So thank you, Kellogg, for asking that question specifically, right? But you should be asking it of yourself anyway. Any question, any business school question, right? The question is not just answer it. The question is show through your answer that you are, thanks to this story, more prepared for success. Right, so focus on that second piece for sure. Okay. Uh, finally, I want to talk just a little bit about conclusions. In 350 words, you guys, you're 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 not going to have the luxury of a four-sentence long conclusion that is purely recapped. Right, just like repeating what you've already said. This would be a colossal waste of your time. Right, waste of words. What you're going to spend 75 words repeating what you've said at the beginning? No, no, no. What, what, what does a good conclusion do? Especially when you're stuck at 350 words, 250 words. Right. A good conclusion. Yeah, of course you need to you need to touch what you have covered in your essay. But if you're smart, you can say something new. You can bring some smart new idea to the table. Conclusions should be smart. They should not be recapped. Right? Don't waste your time. Don't waste your breath. Bring something new. Take what you have proven okay, and take it to a new level, a smarter level. Yeah, that's what a smart conclusion does. If all you're doing in your conclusion, especially when you're stuck at 350 words, is repeating yourself, man, uh, you're doing it wrong. All right. Essay number two. What have been your... And again, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and read this essay question, but remember, I don't care what the essay question is. Right? I'm thinking greatest hits. I'm thinking greatest hits all day long. Right? What are your best leadership experiences? What are your best challenges? Uh, you know, if you spend some time on the Kellogg website, you'll see that uh, lately they've been branding themselves as thinking bravely. Okay, fine. Um, again, check the website. Okay, there's, there's some nice specifics on this particular essay. Um, I think what, what, what I'm going to talk about here, because the leadership essay is so important, um, I, I want to make a slightly different point, uh, maybe a, a more thoughtful point, and something that I've learned not just in the few years of you know being a CEO and opening up offices all over the world and you know managing 70 people and so forth and so on, but I want to help you to think through some of the leadership lessons which I was actually taught when I was in business school. Okay, and there are three that always stick with me, and maybe you guys can draw on these as you are writing this essay for Kellogg. Okay, the first is that there are different leadership styles for different situations. Right? It's not like there's one type of leader and that guy just succeeds. Right? There was a guy named Lee Iacocca in the 80s and Chrysler was all, was all bad and Lee Iacocca came along and he just turned the, the car company Chrysler around and all of a sudden he's on all the newspapers. This is a case we read at HBF. He's in all the newspapers, you know, Forbes magazine, Lee Iacocca, the biggest savior, best CEO ever, blah, blah, blah. Right. Now he's turned the company around. Five years later, right, he gets forced out. Okay, why does that happen? Well, it, it happens because maybe, maybe Lee Iacocca is a turnaround guy. He's the guy to turn around the company, but he's not the guy for a status quo business. He's not an operator. He's not a manager. There are different leadership styles for different situations. Different leaders will do uh, better jobs in different circumstances. Right? And this, of course, feeds into number two. Everyone has their own personal leadership style. Don't read a leadership, leadership book and try to channel it in Kellogg essay number two. All right? What's your style? That is mature. Right? That's what maturity is, is what is your style? Okay, think about that. Search for it. Is it by telling people what to do? Is it by asking people what to do? Is it by motivating? Is it by leading by example? Is it all of them? Is it none of them? I don't care. They're all great. Okay, but what's your personal leadership style? Right, and finally, followers, if you will, that is to say everybody but the leader, uh, are all different. Everybody needs to be led differently. One technique works for one guy, doesn't work for the next guy. Take it from me, man. I'm trying to lead an office in China, <laughs> and if I, if I led them the way that I lead the U.S. guys, Man, nothing would get done. And to be perfectly honest, for my first three months out here opening up this office, nothing did get done. All right. And by the way, you know we get this question from our clients all the time. You know, honestly, John, I don't have a whole lot of leadership experience. That's okay. Business school is not for, you know, 
60-year-old gray-haired CEOs. No one expects you to have 10 guys that report directly to you. No one expects that. No one expects you to be a line manager of a Fortune 500 company. You're 25 years old. You're 30 years old. Right? All we're looking for is one or two or three great, excuse me, great examples showing that you have leadership ability, that you have leadership potential, and that's what we're looking for. We just need one or two situations, one or two instances, all right, and we can make it sing. All right, essay three. All right, careers, goals, very typical. Again, it's short, and I love it. I love that it's short, right? It means that you can't, I mean, everyone else is 500 words, right? You can't, you can't do that anymore, right? There are two ways that you screw this essay up, okay? The first is you leave the reader confused. The reader finishes and he says, well, wait a minute but what do you really want to do, right? We see this all the time. Somebody's using buzzwords. Somebody's saying, you know, stuff like uh, management consulting or strategic business development or, you know, general management or operator. Okay, okay. But it's like, what do you actually want to do? You know what I mean? Um, Got to make that clear. That's the first way to vomit on this essay. The second way is, Leave your reader skeptical that you can do it. Let's say that you're in China, right, and you're applying to an MBA program, and it looks like you may even get in. Um, and then you say, you know, right after school, I want to work for a startup in the U.S. Like right off the bat, it's like, dude, you're Chinese, right? The startup is not going to sponsor your visa, right? What if you're applying? What if you're in the U.S.? What if you're an investment banker and you're applying to Kellogg's one-year program, and you say that after the one-year program, you want to switch into management consulting? Right? The reader's smart. The reader's smarter than that essay. The uh, reader's going to say, sorry, brother, you know, you're not going to get into that business because that's a career change. And I heard John Frank speak one time, and he said that without a summer internship, career changes are going to be hard. All right? What is the, most, what is the single most important thing of a career goal? Maybe let, let's, let's make this even more interesting. What's the single most important thing in a business school application? How about that? Did I get your attention? The answer is connect your past experiences to your future goals. I'm going to say it again. Connect your past experiences to your future goals. Okay, if you don't do that, I don't care how much money you spend on consultants. I don't care, you know, how good your GMAT is. You know, if your career goals do not make sense given your background, you're done. You're done. Keep it simple. Connect your past experiences to your future goals. All right. Oh, look at that. I forgot to introduce myself. That was a joke. I can, I can hear everybody laughing silently through the microphones. Um, for those of you who just joined us, I, I actually never uh, even mentioned who I was or, or, or why I'm here. Real quick, this will just take 30 seconds. This isn't a commercial. Um, but my name is John Frank. I, uh, I founded Admission Auto with my best friend Raj. We went to Brown University together. We actually sang together. We were college a cappella dorks, although we thought we were cool at the time. Um, founded the company together six years ago. I had worked in the real estate business before, you know, doing real estate development and ING and investment banking and all that stuff. And after about 10 years, I was like, you know what? This sucks. I don't, I don't want to do stuff I hate anymore. I want to do something I love instead. So Raj and I founded this company. Our whole thing is based on storylines, right? We have editors, we have consultants, uh, we, we've trained them all. Raj and I have trained them personally. All the MBA guys all went to Magic 7 MBAs. Um, but maybe, maybe the thing that makes us different is uh, Raj is a creative guy. He worked in Hollywood as a producer. And, you know, it's, to me, it's the importance of creativity, you know, smart, creative, the ability to connect the dots. That's who we are. That's what we do. Um, Anyway, it's, it's not a commercial, but that's, that's what we call the Admission Auto Advantage. We've been doing this for a long time, and feel free to reach out uh, if you have any other questions. Um, all right, a couple more essays, and then we're going to wrap up real quick and open up for some Q&A. Um, all right, why are Kellogg and the MBA essential to achieving these career goals? Here's a neat idea, right? The point is, why do you need an MBA? Right, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to make it so that, like... Um, it, it seems like you have no confidence. Man, if I don't get an MBA, I'm done. I'm dead. You know? My career, I'm at a dead end in my career, and man, if I don't, if I don't get an MBA, I don't know. I'm going to be middle management the rest of my life. That is the opposite. We read that all the time. I need an MBA or else I'm effed, right? 
Here's a smarter way to do it, right? Think about one version of your career, right, with no MBA. Well, if I don't get an MBA, you know, I'd, I'd still be okay, you know. Uh, maybe not achieve as much, but I'd still be okay, right? That's version one. Let's give that version a B minus, right? Version two is, you know, instead of I'm a marketing guy, I want to live in Chicago, you know, my family's in Chicago, but, you know, if I end up going to Columbia or whatever, it would, it would still be okay, you know, great outcome, A minus. Right now, think about it. Well, gosh, what happens if I go to Kellogg? Woohoo! <laughs> you know, that's the A plus plus. Right. So set up these scenarios. Right. It's not that you're going to live a horrible life. Right. You need momentum. You need to to create this feeling that you are like a shooting star. You know what I mean? You are just going to blow up. You're right. Catch me while you can, because I'm blowing up before your very eyes. Right. That's what you need to make clear with these goals. Right. Not you know, if I don't get in, I'm done. I'm dead. You don't want to make that point. All right, this is my last slide before the conclusion. I see we're a couple of minutes late, but pretty much right on track. Kellogg, of course, is the reapplicant essay and the optional essay. By the way, I have PowerPoints. I've done presentations on both of those. Um, so feel free to send me an email, John J O N at admissionauto.com. I can send you a you know presentation on the art of the reapplication and the art of the optional essay. Now that being said. Uh, let me try to sum it up for you all in 30 seconds. Uh, there is one key to a successful reapplication. Reapplications are easy. Okay, and the key is this. Have you improved? That's it. Have you improved? Are you better now than you were before? What might that mean? That might mean better experiences at work. It might mean better test scores. It might mean better career goals. People say, well, John, can I change my career goals? You betcha. Maybe that's why you didn't get in, because your career goals were so stupid. You know? But think, you know, the question is always, is it hard to get in as a reapplicant? The answer, of course, is yes. Right? The girl just dumped you, right? And now you're going to call her a year later and ask to go out again? <laughs> Why would she say yes? You know? She already said no. You're not good enough. Right? You got to prove it, bro. You got to say, look, you know, last year I wasn't good enough, but look at all the things I've improved. Okay? Um, finally, uh, optional essays. Now, optional essays are simpler, uh, I'm sorry, are trickier, uh, difficult. Because on the one hand, you need to actually go in and explain what happened, right? Something went wrong. Yes, I got arrested. Yes, I failed school. Yes, my GMAT sucks. And you need to try to explain why I failed school. You know, I was too involved in this or that, or I was young. Or whatever it is, you need to explain it, right? But at the same time, you need to be confident. You need to say, look, you know, I didn't do well in school, but let's be honest, I was 18. You know, look at my work experience. Have you heard of Goldman Sachs? Right? I was promoted there twice. Show me anyone else that's, that's done that. Have you heard of the GMAT? I got a 760. And by the way, I'm president of this club. You know, please um, forgive me. I was immature when I was 18, but I'm over it now. Right? You need to walk that line, and you need to do it fast. Do not write a 500-word optional essay for the love of God. You know, within one sentence, we know what you're going to say. Get in there, make your point, explain what happened, tell them that you're smart anyway, and then mambo on out. All right, get in there and get out of there. And that's it. All right, with that, we're, re we're uh, ready for our conclusion here. Just uh, um, a, a couple quick points that we talked about. One is go to the best school you can get into. Kellogg is a fabulous place, right? Uh, Kellogg may be the best school that you get into. Lots of reasons to go to Kellogg. Um, right, culture, marketing, all of these things, all their global stuff, it's really smart. What they've done in the past five years has been really smart. Um, all right, also, by the way, there's tons of the stuff on our website as well. Check out the Mission Auto website at missionauto.com. Um, make sure to write a love letter. Gotta write a love letter. It's Kellogg especially. Kellogg is very special, very different. A lot of the things we talked about today, we could not say about other schools. Okay, all the electives, the culture, the focus on global, the marketing, Chicago. Not many schools have all of those things at once. Okay, write a good love letter. They deserve it. Okay, and finally, if nothing else, if nothing else, nothing else, um, connect your past experiences to your future goals. This isn't just for Kellogg. This is for everybody. No matter how smart you are, whether you're from Chicago, whether you're a marketing guy, uh, whether you know you invented the Quest program, whatever it is, whether you're Triple M all day long, you're an engineer and you're an innovator, if your past experiences do not connect to your future goals, I promise you, you're not going to get in. 
All right, guys. And that is all I've got. Let's see. How, how did we do on time while we wait for the first, while we choose some questions here for you? All right, good. We got, we got a little bit of time for some questions. Uh, so let's see uh, what we've got. All right. Yeah, talk about the video aspect of the application. You know, videos are always tricky. And uh, uh, it's, something that, it's something that we've seen before. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I see, I see a better one. Uh, I'm going to answer this, this other question instead, because this is the one that I want to talk about. You declared fit is a myth. This is against what we've been hearing everywhere. I love it. Shouldn't we be comfortable with the people and school we're planning to spend two years with? How should anyone choose a school? Should everyone apply to the top ten colleges, period? All right, we're going we're gonna to answer this one first if we can. Um, the answer is I, 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 don't know, I don't know what top ten means. You know, there's Business Week rankings, and there's U.S. Uh, news rankings. I do my own rankings, um, so I, I, I don't. Uh, top ten d does not make any sense to me. Um, so no, of course you don't choose the top ten schools. Um, but for example, um, if you want a career uh, in a somewhat technical field, right? I love the idea of going to MIT. But l l let me give you an even clearer example. Right? Let's say that you want to be a, hmm, what would a real smart example be? Okay, let, let's say that you want to, let's say that your dad owns a big accounting firm, all right? And you're, you're an accountant, you work at a big four firm, but what, what you want to do is, you know, take over your dad's firm, right? And you get online, okay? And you say, wow, online I see that the best school for accounting, the best accounting program is at University of Texas, Austin. <clears throat> right, and you go down to UT Austin, and, and you know you love the music, and you love Tex-Mex food, um, and you go there, and, and you love it. And you say, you know, UT Austin is the place for me. It's it's really comfortable. It's a top 15, top 20 program, and it's great for accounting, and that works for me because I want to go into the accounting field. Right, so I'm going to turn down Harvard. Right, this is exactly what you should not do. Right, Harvard is a very big school. There are 900 people that go there. Right, <laughs> the idea that you can visit the school, you know, over whatever their admit weekend is, and determine whether or not, for sure, there are people there that you can be friends with. Uh, oh, you know, I'm sure I would be more happy at UT Austin than I would at Harvard. I, I don't buy it. Um, I believe that Harvard opens more doors than UT Austin. Um, so, I, of course, you know, when, when when I make that statement, that fit is a myth. You know, I, 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 love, I love that people disagree, and I, I welcome the disagreement. Um, I want you to disagree, but I, I want you to hear my opinion, okay? Um, let, let me give you another example. Um, I am not a Harvard guy, right? Like, what is a Harvard guy? Um, a Harvard guy, I don't know, he, like, likes to talk about himself. Um, he, real type A, you know, he's like an investment banker. Or, or I mean, maybe the Harvard guys are all, like, Fortune 500 guys, right? Now, that's not me, man. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the crazy guy that moves to China. Um, but when I went to Harvard, first of all, I found a great group of people that were just like me. It's a big program. You're going to find people that are like you no matter where you are. We're all, you know, good at uh, uh, adapting. Okay? Um, and secondly, uh, just because there was no real estate program there, all of the best real estate programs still recruited, right? So my answer is you go to the best school you can get into. I, I don't know what, what, what top 10 refers to, uh, so no, don't, don't go to a top 10 school. Uh, you need to judge what, what is the school where you're going to get the most mileage. You see, you guys, we don't actually know where we're going to be in 10 years. I don't care if you think that you're an MMM guy. You don't actually know where you're going to be in 10 years. You have to be smart. right? If you go and you visit a school and like you're really happy there and, and like you feel like, you know, they're good friends and stuff. Listen, folks, this isn't friendship school. This is meaning of life school. You know what I mean? Uh, it's business school, of course, right? This is, this is business school. Okay, so my answer is you go to the best school you can get into. That's it. That's it. And I love, I love the disagreement. Um, I relish it or relish in it. Um, send me an email. I'm happy to, happy to, to share my own experience as a Harvard guy in China, especially, you know, I got into Stanford. You know, I loved it at Stanford. I, I you know, the weather and the people. 
I got to tell you, uh, in China, I've done so much better with Harvard than I would have with Stanford. Why? Because it's Harvard. Harvard's Harvard. All right, <clears throat> another great question. Do your chances of getting into the Kellogg MBA program if you choose to apply to the MMM program? The answer is no. The answer is no. In fact, you know, we'll, we'll send someone to the MMM program every year. Um, MMM to me is fabulous, right? I think it's just one extra essay. Um, MMM to me is a chance to increase your odds. Okay, increase your odds. Why? Well, because one of the things that people struggle with, especially, you know, if you're a white banker in New York or if you're an Indian IT guy or if you're in China, Right, you struggle for ways to make to make yourself seem different. MMM is different. The fact that they are willing to take people who are not engineers means that everyone has a very interesting, unique opportunity, right, to pitch themselves as innovators. That is fascinating. You know, write an essay about how you're an innovator. I can get behind that. I can I can build a brand around that in an application. Um, so the answer is no. You know, if if you think you have a shot at it, you should apply. It makes you interesting. It makes you different. Okay, maybe we'll take one or two more questions. Can you quickly recap on Magic 7? I'm not sure what that means. Um, sure, uh, Magic 7, you, you can just Google it. Uh, the Magic 7 is, uh, I guess somebody developed this phrase, and it's for what somebody believes to be the top seven business schools. So what is it? It's Harvard, Stanford, it's MIT, Kellogg, it's University of Chicago, um, it's uh, Wharton, uh, you know, I, I think that's seven. It, it's, it's the magic seven. Google it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just rankings. Um, I'm applications. Okay, there are two ways to do creative things on applications. All right, there are two ways to do creative things on applications. Okay, there are two things you can do. Okay, the first is <clears throat> a creative format, right? So, for example, on the video, what if you did something interesting? What if it were a format different than everybody else is doing? It's not just an interview, maybe. Maybe it's a music video, right? That would be an interesting format, okay? They're asking you to do something creative, so there are two ways to do it. One is with the format, okay, the format itself. Okay, the second thing is, well, what if you did a very typical format? Very typical format, Q&A, interview, whatever it is. Okay, very typical format, but now the content is very creative. Right, this, by the way, is true, you know, every year, University of Chicago has a, a or typically has a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, NYU Stern has some crazy questions. Um, Open-ended, right, any creative question, those are your two options. One is a creative format with more streamlined, information. The other is more creative information with a more streamlined format. My advice is always pick one or the other, but never neither and never both. All right, guys, sorry for just a couple of technical difficulties, but I, I thought this went well. Anyone has any extra questions, um, feel free to reach out to me, john at admissionauto.com. You know, make sure to check out Beat the GMAT, the site for the chat party that's going on. Um, you know, I, I love that there's some disagreement. I love that some of the things that I say uh, get people excited and get people talking. Um, I would welcome the opportunity to continue to engage in that discussion with everybody. Um, but for now, that's all for me. John Frank, CEO of Admission Auto. Thank you, everybody, and have a good day or night. <laughs>